they are almost always there. We may feel like in that desperate place, you never hear um, something that you can like restate as a positive, but I rarely can't find something they've said. Yeah. I know I shouldn't do it, for example. Right. Yeah. Th- saying, praise God that he has given you that knowledge and discernment because you are right. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Send me, Lord. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Welcome to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast, a podcast designed to equip, encourage, and challenge you in pro life ministry and always with a focus on the gospel. Stay tuned. I felt your passion, touched your heart. Welcome to the Gospel Centered Pro Life Podcast. I'm Vicki Kosiorg, and I'm here with Daniel Parks. Yes, you are. Yep, and we yes, are. I am. Um, it's a cold, rainy day, but we are rejoicing in the fact that God is with us. Jesus is on His throne, and we had sidewalk counselors at all three of our abortion centers. To me, that's a miracle. Yeah, that's a miracle amazing. with um, this kind of weather, and yet we had enough people to be out there at all three of the abortion centers here in Charlotte. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so today's topic came out of as so many of our topics come out of a something that happened recently, and actually that happens frequently. In this case, I was contacted by. Love Life Administration, okay. who had um, received a call from a friend of a mom who was going to abort. Okay. And that friend had no idea what to say. Yeah. And she was saying, can right. you guys guide me? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to be talking about how to guide friends to counsel, counsel for life. And actually that happens when you're on the sidewalk as well, that right. you're going to see the friends pull up and the mom go into the abortion center but the friends are still there. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes those friends are supporting them and having an abortion. And right. um, sometimes those friends are the ones getting in your face and cussing you out. And sometimes those friends are the ones who maybe rode along with her to try to talk her out of the abortion. Yeah. I've seen that actually quite often. Yeah. And we've had them come over to, to us and ask, is there anything else that I can say? Or yeah. would you guys please be praying? And so, um, yeah, I think. I think we'll kind of cover both of those bases, right? The, the situations that can happen at the abortion center, mm-hmm. um, but I think the primary focus is situations that happen away from the abortion center. When we hear, you know, some family member, or some friend, or something of ours comes to us and says, "A friend of mine is considering an abortion. How can I talk him out of it?" Sure, and of course, that friend is trusted by the mom, unlike us who are strangers. Right. So, but I will always offer right off the bat because it's a lot. The experience counts for a lot. There are yeah. a lot of things that you can do and say that could change that that woman's mind. Yeah. So I always offer, would she be willing to talk to me? Right. Um, if you could, and if we're at the abortion center, listen, if you could bring her out to talk with me, um, I think it really might help. Yeah. So, but in this case, the... Um, the friend said no, that the only one that she would talk to was that friend. Right. But so I kind of outlined uh, what I did because I think it's generally what I do when I'm speaking to friends. And I, I get a lot of questions from counselors, new counselors saying, well, what do I say? What yeah. do I say to the friend? So the the first step, as in the first step with the mom, is find out the details. Right. Yep. Listen carefully. Keep notes. On which points are critical. I'm often doing this over the phone if it's someone that's been referred to me, a yeah, friend that yeah. has called me. Yeah. I mean, we say oftentimes no one gets up in the morning and think, hey, it's a good day for an abortion, right? Yeah. There's struggles, there's issues. And so getting to the bottom of what those issues are so that you can answer them and show that they don't justify abortion is helpful. Right. Right. And so, actually very critical in these conversations. It is because you can't begin to advise if you don't know the situation. Right. So the first thing I do is ask a lot of questions about what's going on. And in in the recent story, some of my questions led to these facts coming out. The mom was actually not eager to abort. Okay. The boyfriend was push, pushing for the abortion. In fact, everyone in the mom's life, except for the friend who contacted us, was telling her that she would be a fool not 
to abort. Right. So she was all alone in this. She did not believe in God, but she did believe in a higher power. She had even stated that the baby was here for a purpose. You can bet I starred that oh, yeah. and wrote that down in my notes on how I would counsel. So when you're getting these details, initially mm-hmm. you got these details from the friend that from contacted friend. you. Mm-hmm. Okay, This is all from the friend. Okay. Um, she was in her late 30s. She had okay. no other children. I'm telling you these facts because then imagine the questions I had to ask right. to get these facts because these are really important uh, facts that yeah. I'm I'm yeah. learning in order for me to to do my best job counseling. Yeah. So just so everyone who's listening is clear, when you're when you're digging for this information, what are the types of questions that you're asking, and and are you doing it kind of like in a bullet pointed way? You know, sort of like you're filling out a form asking this question, that question, this question. Are you doing it more in a relational way? It depends. With with the mom, for sure, my focus is going to be on relational. With the friend who's I'm in no danger, the friend aborting, <laughs> the friend is trying to talk her out of it. Right. I want to get as much information as I can get as quickly as possible. So it was probably more um, bullet point. But it, it piggybacks off of what she tells me. One right. question will often lead to the next question. I knew I needed a lot of background yeah. to be able to tell the friend what to do. So yeah. does that make sense? Because I do yeah, think yeah. you're raising a really important point. Yeah. I mean, I guess kind of what I'm aiming for is because you can never ask every question, right? right. A lot of that stuff's going to come out in a relational way as you're talking to this friend and trying to counsel them so that they can in turn counsel that mom. But there probably are some necessary things mm-hmm. that you would ask. Mm-hmm. So like... Obviously, mm-hmm. what what's the situation that she's facing that makes her feel like abortion is an option? Mm-hmm. But some other things that people might not think about is like, what's her age? Mm-hmm. Um, what community does she live in? Right, that, because that depends important. on where resources are. Yeah. Is is Does the father know about the baby? What right. does the father think about the baby? Um, how many other children? That yeah. will definitely... Yeah. Does she work? Yeah. I find, does she work? Um, yeah. and does these she are have some any questions. support? Yeah. These are some questions that people might not think about. Mm-hmm. And that's how I want to kind of bring those things out. Yeah. Um, does she want the abortion? Yeah. It, or is she being right, yeah, coerced in any way? Most people might assume that she does. Of course, right. if she's considering an abortion, does she want an abortion might seem like a dumb question. But right. it's actually a very important question. It is. Because then you can kind of get into, is she being coerced? Right. right. If she doesn't want the abortion... But she's going to have an abortion, or at least saying she's going to have an abortion. Obviously, there's something there telling her that she should. Exactly. And then ask why. Why? Yeah. What are the obstacles? Yeah. What are the things she's facing that is leaning her towards abortion if she doesn't really want one? Asking, does she believe in God? Yeah. I think it's, of course, absolutely yeah, critical. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, it kind of gives you um, a framework for how you're going to be talking to her if you talk to her or the guidance that you give to the friend that's going to be talking to her. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so the friend, I actually got the text of of the friend. And as she I said, so what's going on? A lot of these questions she answered right away just as she was talking to me. Yeah, I think these are all made up names, but I won't mention any of the names just in case I work with a girl. She's newly pregnant, really scared and upset about the future. Her boyfriend, who she thought was the one that by the way, another critical point, her boyfriend, who she thought was the one. So you know there is enormous hurt. Right, yeah. He's not the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's good to be able to be able to voice that right. and for the friend to voice that. Um, in, is the one pushing her hard to abort the baby. He says it isn't a living being yet, so she needs to hurry up before it is. He's pressuring her. Yeah. Um, she wants to keep it, but everyone in her life is telling her it will be too hard. It's selfish for her to want to keep it, twisting a good and natural impulse into evil. It's selfish of her to want to keep it. She's scared due to her age that she won't have another chance. That was when I asked how old she was. She's 30. Yeah. Um, she had an abortion. You said she was in her late 30s, right? Yes. I'm sorry. She was in her late 30s, which makes it even less likely that she will be able to have another uh, she had an abortion when she was younger, and it was a bad experience. Yeah. Of course, you're going to want to mention that in counseling. Yeah, of course. Um, I've highly encouraged her that she's right to believe it's a life inside of her. She's scheduled for an ultrasound in a couple of weeks, but she's still unsure of what to do. I want to help her. Is there a crisis pregnancy center that she could go to and be counseled and shown an ultrasound sooner? This friend 
very intelligently knew two weeks might be too long. The boyfriend's pressuring her. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I want to clarify because what you just read was a, a literal text message or it an was, email. It was right? a literal text message. And so yeah. the friend was not saying that it's selfish for her to want to keep it. The friend was saying that's the lie that this woman is Correct. believing, that Correct. it's selfish for her to want to keep the baby. Correct. And obviously Correct. that has come from the boyfriend, probably. Probably. That's really pressuring her and manipulating her. Maybe maybe other people in her life as yeah. well. But um, And then the friend said she's praying hard that God will help her. Yeah. So um, right away I told her, well, we do have the lo- a local PRC and I am a pregnancy resource center and I'm sure we can get her an appointment tomorrow. Is yeah. she here in Charlotte? And then offered to talk with her um, and asked what the friend does in... The friend said she works with this mom, okay. and so I asked what what the work was. Yeah. So the friend answered those questions and um and said that she basically she did know how far along she was. She thought she was six to seven weeks. That's important, also. Um, right. So the key things that um that I discovered just through that very brief you know interaction so far that I knew should be addressed to help a choice of life. Number one, she's scared. Yeah. Two, the boyfriend's pushing for an abortion. So she's being coerced. Right. The boyfriend claims the baby's not alive. So being able to talk about fetal development is critical. Dispelling those lies. Yeah, exactly. Six to seven weeks, there's plenty of things that we can point out that that baby is indeed alive. The person (laughs) wants kids one day and um and feels that this child could be her only hope for that she's right yeah that could very well yeah. be the the case yeah um she knows the horror of abortion firsthand she's had an abortion that we need to talk about that with her you yeah, remember absolutely. how awful that yeah. was um while she's not a believer she does believe in a higher power i always always use that as a springboard to talk about god yeah and then this was so important that she believes the baby has a purpose. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that obviously springs out of her belief in a, you know, air quotes, higher power. Mm-hmm. And it's likely she was raised in church or she'd been taught mm-hmm. some things in church and maybe doesn't have any interest in church because of offense with the church or whatever. But um, likely the higher power that she's talking about, she believes in, is God. Right. And potentially the God of the Bible. Either way, we're going to bring him into the equation. Right. Um, Like the friend, uh, I agreed that the immediate next step was the ultrasound. Get her. She was willing. um, I knew I could get someone to see her the very next day. And, And so I set that up right away. And the friend did contact the mom, and that was good with the mom. The mom did want to see the baby. The next day would work for her. Um, and in that, in the conversation, I encouraged the friend that not only set up the ultrasound, but immediate hope yeah. needed to be offered. Yeah. So looking at all of those things that she had raised and giving, replacing lies and despair with a positive vision and hope yeah. Yeah. In, in each of those Combating areas. fear with faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So something we sh- we all need to remember when counseling a friend to counsel a mom is if there are specific plans to abort as there were with this mom, it is urgent to speak yeah. with her. And when you say specific plans, you mean she has an appointment. She has an appointment yeah. set up. Yeah. yeah. And oftentimes you can find that out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You don't know unless you ask, and so encouraging the friend to ask: Does she has an right. Does she have an appointment? And right. when? And even where? I mean, we've seen situations right. like this where they found out when the appointment is, the abortion clinic that it is, so that we can be there and we can intervene and we can let them know. And even even had situations where the friend or someone connected to that person has come out to the abortion center to plead with them. Yeah, right. That's happened, and that actually yep. can go a long way in reaching her. Yep. For sure. So the difference, obviously, if you're on the sidewalk, they've got an appointment. They're usually in the the abortion center. But um, it does delineate the difference between an abortion minded or vulnerable woman 
and an abortion determined yeah. woman. If she's made the appointment, she's abortion determined, yeah. and that that definitely is is more urgency. So then I I. I knew I was going to try and counsel the friend in what to say, but because she did have an appointment and I felt it is abortion determined, that it is urgent, there's a lot yeah. that for that to put on that friend's back um, who is completely untrained. I, I gave her my name and number, said I would talk with her and or the boyfriend both. Would they be willing to speak with me in the morning? And she said that um, she gave her my name and number said that the friend might be willing. Uh, She did have my name and number. She didn't know if she would call. Yeah. So um, uh, since I knew she was talking with the boyfriend that night, who is the one pushing for the abortion, I urged the friend to try to talk with her either after that, right after that discussion or first, first thing in the morning. Yeah. So you're saying not the friend talking to the boyfriend but the mom who was considering an abortion was going to be was going to be meeting pushing with back her against boyfriend the boyfriend and talking bit. with him that night with some of the stuff I believe if I'm recalling this correctly that this friend was already texting okay as she's talking with me and texting with me she's copy and pasting what I would say and texting it to the abortion minded mom who is starting to waver so okay. one of the things we always do, the three talking points yeah. that we use, God, resources, humanity, the baby, I outlined those. And because of the fact that this friend was texting the abortion-minded mom, I said, look, just copy and paste. Yeah. And and I texted what I would say yeah. on those three talking points, which is easier than if you're dealing with them right there at an abortion center. Though not impossible, because if they're in the abortion center and they still have their phone, I will sometimes say, write this. Yeah. And <laughs> and then, you know, you've got the the, the beauty of a, someone who's done this for a while, the, our experience, but using the friend who right. the mom trusts to yeah. convey the information. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So she was six or seven weeks, of course, main things that I talked about, heartbeat, if she's missed her period, detectable brainwaves at six weeks. Um talked about all the human DNA she will ever have was already there already. And um, and that was the fetal development facts. I think that the main ones, if, if the baby is six weeks and under, um, but, uh, but then starting to talk about she's in the place God designed perfectly to yeah. protect her. And if you take that child's life today, you know, you'll never know what yeah. God's purpose is right. because the friend had said, she knew God had yeah. purpose. Yeah, yeah. So piggybacking on that, um, and the, and that is where I went next. Rephrasing and supporting positive things. This is a good counseling technique, no matter what. Whether right. we're talking to a mom or talking to a friend, rephrase and support the positive things that someone has stated. Yeah, they are almost always there. We may feel like in that desperate place, you never hear. Um, something that you can like restate as a positive, but I rarely can't find something they've said. Yeah. I know I shouldn't do it, for example. Right. Yeah. Th- saying, praise God that he has given you that knowledge and discernment because you are right. Yeah. So that's stating a yeah. positive yeah, that's good. instead of going into the negative, which is, but I have to do it, which is usually where it ends up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what, what they're going to yeah. say. Yeah, and so in this case, of course, it was, I know this baby has a purpose, and you're really able to, with that statement, drill into who is the one that gives that baby purpose, so that's when you bring God into the equation. And you're restating, but also reminding, Mm -hmm. reminding her of this baby's purpose, and you can even expound on that, like we've talked about painting a positive vision. Right. What could this baby's purpose be? Yeah. Right? This baby could be a... A president, this baby could be a doctor, whatever. Obviously, mm-hmm. again, God knows, but expounding on that and, and creating some vision and putting kind of a dream in that mama's heart yeah, that the sacrifices and the struggles that it's going to take to bring this child into the world are worth it because that baby does have a purpose. Right. Um, I did talk with her. Um, I'd, I, I piggybacked off of some of the things she had said, which were the negatives. Imagine if this is the last child she will ever conceive and she kills him or her. What unbearable pain that will cause. Um, And 
and again, I'm I'm telling her to text all this and yeah. told told the friend, I'm prepping you in case she doesn't call me because I'm thinking she probably is not. Right. She's probably more likely to call the friend or yeah, to, because she trusts the friend. So then I talked about our mentorship program and had some gave some specifics on some of the things that we could do to help her. Yeah. Um, and of course, even though she said she believed in a higher power, I'm going to talk about that higher power as God. Yeah, of course. And bring God into the equation. Yeah. So, um, so those three talking points then had been brought to the friend and, um, and then just as we breathe, here's another kind of key point. The friend is thinking, I can't do this. Right. This is a baby's life is on the line. That is a weighty, scary yeah, thought. Yeah, absolutely. In the same way that we breathe courage into the moms that are coming to have an abortion and we breathe courage that they can do the right thing, we need to do that for a friend Yeah, that yeah. is, that is going to go talk to the mom. So um, uh, I did that at that point, you know, talking with her. She, this, the, the mom trusts her. The mom is talking with her already. This is an amazing, um, you know, blessing. Yeah. The friend obviously trusts and and wants someone maybe to even talk her out of right. this. And her her friend is the only person speaking up for the life of that child. What an amazing privilege. Yeah. So yeah. saying those sorts of things. Absolutely. That that the mom would um would be encouraged yeah. and would have would go forth now and and do this, which she was already doing as I'm texting her. She's right. already texting to the mom and reminded her to pray and I was in prayer, and con- I think it was Brian from Love Life who had contacted me initially, and I said, pray. Yeah. It, it's in yeah. this, this friend's hands now. She is working on this friend right now. Yeah, I think actually that's a strong encouragement. Of course, you want to encourage the friend who's trying to reach her friend that's considering an abortion to be praying. But then letting that friend know this is a way to breathe courage into them is let them know that there's a whole network of people right. that are going to be praying, and I think it's important. Put this situation out. Now, leave out details, no names. We're not going to share any names or anything like that. But let that friend know there's a whole group of people, hundreds of people potentially, that are praying for her Mm -hmm. to say what needs to be said Mm -hmm. and that God uses her. Also encourage her, and this is how I always encourage people that are, whether you're counseling at an abortion center or on the phone or whatever, is that it's in God's hands. We can't Mm -hmm. change a heart. We can't make people do the right thing. We can plant seeds and we can water seeds, but God gives the increase. So encouraging that friend with that fact, it's not, it doesn't all rest on your shoulders. It might feel like right. it does because, like you said, she's the only one that's speaking life. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's between that mom and the Lord. And so we need to be praying. We need to be encouraging that um, friend to be praying. But also, like, what whatever the outcome is, that is in the Lord's hands and we can't do anything to affect that woman's heart as far as like go in and change her heart. We can speak truth and we should, but God is the one that changes hearts. Yeah. That's a really important point because um, they don't always end well. This is an abortion determined mom with a lot of pressures to for her to abort. And you certainly don't want to destroy this, this person who's going out on a limb right. to fight for that child's life, um, it is really important to let her know you're doing what God has called you to do, but the results are up to yeah, him. Yeah, and, and yeah because like you him. said, these situations don't always end well. And we've se- seen situations, I and mean, we've counseled plenty of women right. that go and have the abortion. And that's a point in which the devil can really play tricks on your mind. Yeah. And you should have said this and could have did this and that. That's why I think up front, it's really important to encourage them with the fact that it's in God's hands. And it doesn't mean that God wants that baby to die if that baby does die. But God is the only one that can change a heart. And for whatever reason, that mom's heart wasn't changed because she didn't respond to the Lord. That's not your fault. Right. You've given her the truth. You've spoken the truth. And that's all that you can do. I do think that when there are situations like this that you guys encounter, that ultimately that mom doesn't choose life, mm-hmm. that it is good to affirm that friend that tried to reach her and mm-hmm. just encourage her, knowing mm-hmm. that the devil can really mm-hmm. wreak havoc in their hearts and their minds, let her know that you're praying, sorry that that happened. You can you know, express sorrow and, and grieve with those who mm-hmm. grieve, and uh, but just encourage and thank them. Thank you for doing what you could. Yeah. yeah. Now, Praise God in this situation, yeah. the outcome 
uh, seem pretty positive, right? I'll, yeah, I'll get you yeah. to share that. Uh, well, the text uh, she texted uh, last night. So the friend texted me and and said she texted me last night that she is keeping the baby. Yeah. Wow. Praise the Lord. Um, and I said, praise God, have her call me today and I'll set her up with a mentor who'll provide a baby shower with, with um, up to two years of what her baby will need and, and we'll go over all her obstacles. And she did and, yeah. and she got set up with That's a mentor. Amazing. Um, so uh, when, but when I was talking with her about it may not go the way we want it to go and, um, and when it, this has happened where it it doesn't go the way we want it to go. The mom uh, chooses abortion. I will always share the many times that I'm the one that is counseled. Yeah. And I have 10 years experience and the mom still chooses abortion. Yeah. You know, we, we, it just really is not up to us. And I think that helps them. But yeah, in this case, we, we were both rejoicing. There's, there really is nothing like it. Yeah. It's amazing. um, And yeah. And that friend just was on cloud nine. She had, she had successfully counseled a mom to, to choose life without knowing anything. She was just a willing servant of the Lord. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, guys, we hope that this, uh, podcast episode was an encouragement to you guys. If you want to reach out to us, you can reach me, Daniel, at lovelife.org. You can reach her, Vicky, with a Y, at lovelife.org. We'd love to hear from you guys for uh, maybe suggestions for future episodes, subjects we haven't covered that you would like for us to cover. We'd love to hear from you on those. And uh, we'd love to encourage you along the lines of sidewalk outreach. If there's a struggle that you guys are having and anything that we can just to encourage you through, we'd love to do that. Also, I want to encourage you guys to check out our Sidewalks for Life website, sidewalks at number four, life.com. And then also the podcast website, gospelcenteredprolife.com, where all of our episodes live. And you can search uh, for those episodes and for subjects that maybe you wonder if we've covered that subject in an episode. We probably did. So you can search for keywords and stuff on that website. And uh, we hope all that is a blessing to you. And until next time, God bless. God bless you all. Give me an outlet for gratitude I know it will cost me my life But nothing's too precious since I met you